Today we delve into the history of one of England's most innovative motor engineers. Harry Westlake was born on 21st August 1897 in Exeter, Devon, into a comfortable middle-class family. His father, Henry John Westlake, was a director of the Willey Foundry and Engineering Works. He attended Exeter School, where he showed little interest in academics but excelled in sport. As a youth, he was a keen motorcyclist and tinkerer. At around age 15, he fitted a motorised third wheel to his bicycle, a device similar to the later Wall Auto Wheel. By 1912, he had obtained a driving licence while aged 15 and borrowed a motorcycle, demonstrating from a young age his passion for motor engineering. In 1915, his father apprenticed him to Willie and Company, exposing him to tool room, foundry and drawing office work. And in 1918, he and his father jointly patented an improved motorcycle carburetor that boosted fuel efficiency. During World War I, Westlake joined the Royal Flying Corps in 1916, where his engineering aptitude was recognised. He was asked to design and build experimental carburetors for aircraft engines, and his designs proved successful in early tests. Discharged in 1919, Westlake used his aviation engineering experience to found Wex Carburetors Limited in Exeter. This company manufactured his patented Wex carburetor and supplied high-performance carburetors for motorcycles and racing use. His workshop at London's Fulham Road expanded to several employees and sponsored Brooklyn's racer Gordon Cobbled. The development work also led Westlake to create an airflow meter for testing carburation. However, by 1926, Wex Carburetors encountered cash flow problems and went out of business. In 1926, Westlake joined Automotive Engineering Limited, on retainer. Soon he came to the attention of W. O. Bentley, whose four-and-a-half-litre racing engine was underperforming. Westlake applied his airflow testing techniques and redesigned the engine's cylinder head, boosting its power by roughly 50%. The improved Bentley Speed 6 engine helped Bentley take the first four places at the 1929 24 Hours of Le Mans. His work on the Bentley racing engines, including Bentley's first Le Mans win in 1924, earned him a reputation as an expert cylinder head tuner. Indeed, he was later acclaimed as England's greatest expert on cylinder head design. In 1935, Westlake left automotive engineering to form his own consulting firm, initially Westlake and Taylor, at the Alta factory in London. He provided engineering advice to British and continental manufacturers. Throughout the 1930s, he also tuned engines for Austin and MG, and helped develop competition engines for SS cars. In the early 1930s, William Lyons, co-founder of the Swallow Sidecar Company, was determined to evolve beyond motorcycle sidecars and attractive coach-built bodies. His vision was for Swallow to produce complete cars under the new SS Cars name, blending style with performance at a price point that ordinary buyers could afford. The cars themselves looked the part, but beneath the bonnet lay standard motor company side valve engines, solid but lacking the sparkle to match Lyons' ambitions. To inject real performance, Lyons sought out Harry Westlake, already acclaimed as Britain's foremost expert in airflow and combustion. Westlake had built his reputation with Bentley's Le Mans winning engines and with MG's competition cars, and his mastery of gas flow dynamics made him the obvious man to turn to. Wislake took the somewhat prosaic two-and-a-half-litre standard side-valve unit and reimagined it with a completely new overhead valve cylinder head. His design was centred on improved porting and combustion chamber shapes that allowed the engine to breathe more efficiently. By ensuring a cleaner, faster burn of the fuel-air mixture, he raised both power and responsiveness. The results were dramatic. Output climbed to around 70 bhp, a considerable leap over the stock figure. This new engine was fitted first to the SS90, a rakish sports car that began to establish SS car's reputation for offering speed and style at a fraction of the cost of its rivals. 
Building on this success, Lyons introduced the SS-100 in 1935. Offered initially with the Westlake reworked 2.5-litre engine, it later gained the enlarged 3.5-litre version, which provided even more power. In this form, the SS-100 was capable of exceeding 100 miles per hour, a figure that made it one of the fastest British production cars of its era. What made this achievement all the more remarkable was the value proposition. The SS-100 delivered Aston Martin or Lagonda levels of performance at roughly half the cost. Lyons supplied the elegant bodywork and sharp marketing instincts, but it was Westlake's engineering brilliance that gave the car its genuine speed. The collaboration between Lyons and Westlake in the 1930s was crucial. It proved that SS cars could produce vehicles that weren't just handsome, but genuinely quick and competitive. The reputation earned by the SS-100 laid the foundation for the company's rebranding as Jaguar Cars after World War II. Westlake's work with SS and later Jaguar established the template. Style and luxury were essential, but true credibility came from performance. That credibility was born in the cylinder heads designed by Westlake, and it would carry through to the legendary XK engine and Jaguar's post-war racing triumphs. In short, Lyons gave SS cars glamour and direction, but Westlake gave it the mechanical heart and performance edge that turned the company into a serious player on the international motoring stage. During World War II, Westlake applied his combustion expertise to military engines. He assisted Rolls-Royce in developing the Merlin aircraft engine and its tank variant for Spitfires and Shermans. He also worked with Jaguar's engineers, William Haynes, Walter Hassan, Claude Bailey, on designing the new Jaguar XK twin-cam straight-six engine, which would debut in the late 1940s. In addition, Weslake served as a consultant for other war-related engines. He helped design the flat-four engine for the Jowett Javelin car and improved engines for carrier and scammel military trucks. After the war, Weslake established his own research company in Rye, Sussex, named Weslake & Company Limited. In the late 1940s, he continued working with Norton on their racing motorcycle engines, improving the Manx Norton's gas flow. After World War II, William Lyons decided to rebrand SS Cars as Jaguar Cars Limited and make a clean break from the past. He wanted something completely new, an engine designed and built entirely in-house. What they came up with was the legendary XK Twin Cam Straight Six, which would go down as one of the greatest production engines of the 20th century. While Jaguar's own engineers, William Haynes, Walter Hassan and Claude Bailey, led the overall engine design, they brought in Weslake to handle something crucial, the combustion chamber and valve layout. This turned out to be a masterstroke. Weslake's design featured hemispherical combustion chambers with inclined valves that gave the engine excellent breathing characteristics, especially impressive for a road car. The result was a smooth, high-revving engine that produced 160 horsepower right from the start. When the XK120 debuted in 1948, it became the world's fastest production car, and that engine was the main reason why. The XK engine went on to power Jaguars for nearly four decades, from 1948 all the way into the mid-1980s. In the early 1950s, Jaguar decided racing was the way to build their reputation. And once again, Westlake's expertise with airflow and combustion became central to their success. The Jaguar C-Type ran from 1951 to 1953, and Westlake refined his head designs even further for competition. The results spoke for themselves. Jaguar won Le Mans in 1951 and 1953, beating both Ferrari and Mercedes in the process, then came the D-Type from 1954 to 1957, which featured even more powerful versions of the XK engine. Weslake's porting work and higher compression ratios helped Jaguar achieve something remarkable. They won Le Mans three years running, 1955, 1956 and 1957. 
What made this even more impressive was that Westlake's head design could handle this escalation in performance without sacrificing reliability, which was rare in endurance racing. Westlake kept working with Jaguar well into the 1960s, helping refine the 3.8-litre and 4.2-litre XK engines that powered the iconic E-Type and Mark II saloons. His foundational work essentially laid the groundwork for Jaguar's dominance in touring and GT cars that lasted well into the 1970s. During this incredibly busy period, Westlake's firm also branched into production car engines. He was contracted by the Austin Morris Group, BMC, to create an improved cylinder head for the overhead valve A-series engine. His design was used on the Morris Minor, and later the iconic Mini and its derivatives, earning royalties on each unit produced. He also consulted on BMC's B-series and C-series engines. For Rover, he developed a new head for the 3-litre inline 6 used in the Rover P4 and P5. He even worked with Chrysler USA to develop a wedge-shaped combustion chamber for their RBV-8 engine, first used in Stage 2 form in 1963. Westlake was deeply involved in Britain's 1950s Formula One racing renaissance, as well as improving production car engines. From the start of Tony Vandervelde's Van Wall F1 project, Westlake was brought in as a consultant. By 1956, Westlake took over the detailed development of the engine for Van Wall. Working with engineers Leo Kuzmicki, Colin Chapman and Frank Costin, the Van Wall cars were refined and began winning Grand Prix races by 1957. Van Wall won the inaugural Constructors' Championship in 1958. Simultaneously, Westlake advised Coventry Climax on the port design of their FPF engine, used by Cooper and Lotus in F1. Westlake also worked with British Racing Motors, BRM, in the late 1950s and early 1960s. His company helped develop the BRM P56 1.5-litre V8 that powered Graham Hill to the 1962 World Championship. BRM's owners, Rubery Owen, took a stake in Westlake, and BRM sent designers to collaborate on advanced projects. When F1 rules moved to 3 litres in 1966, Westlake, with Peter Burthon, designed a new four-valve per cylinder 3-litre V12. A single-cylinder test block achieved about 158 brake horsepower per litre. However, BRM management favoured its own H16 design, so after Westlake's contract ended, the V12 project was shelved. The brief Westlake-BRM partnership exemplified his role in cutting-edge engine design. By the late 1960s, Westlake's fame had spread worldwide, and his reputation would receive its most glamorous international validation through the Ford GT40 programme. The circumstances that led to this triumph were as dramatic as the victories themselves. When Ford officially withdrew from endurance racing after their 1967 Le Mans victory, it looked like the GT40's racing days were over. New regulations for 1968 had banned the massive 7-litre engines that powered Ford's dominant Mark IV, limiting prototypes to 3-litre Formula One engines. But there was a loophole. The private JW Gulf Oil team could still run a Mark I with a 5-litre engine, as a sports car rather than a prototype. Mentor John Wire and his JW Automotive Engineering team, backed by Gulf Oil. Harry Westlake and his company provided the Gurney Westlake cylinder heads for the engines that powered the Gulf Wire Ford GT, 40 Mark I, to two consecutive wins at Le Mans in 1968 and 1969. These weren't just any cylinder heads. They were exotic Westlake lightweight alloy cylinder heads that helped the 5-litre competition-spec Ford V8 engine deliver a proven 479 peak horsepower at a track-worthy 6,500 RPM. The same car, chassis number 1075, achieved both victories. Pedro Rodriguez and Lucien Bianchi drove 1,075 to its first Le Mans win in 1968, and Jackie Ix and Jackie Oliver won with it in 1969. 
This was particularly remarkable because a Mark I GT40 managed to win Le Mans outright in 1968 and 1969, after more advanced GT40 stopped being competitive. The international impact was enormous. Here was a British engine specialist cylinder head design powering an American car to victory at the world's most prestigious endurance race, run by a British team with Gulf oil backing. The iconic Gulf blue and orange livery made the victories even more memorable, cementing both the GT40 and Westlake's reputation on the global stage. These wins proved that Westlake's mastery of airflow and combustion could compete with and defeat the best engineering efforts from Ferrari, Porsche and other European manufacturers at their own game. Westlake also assisted Ford's sports car programme in 1970-72. He and his stepson, Michael Daniels, designed a new 3-litre aluminium block V12 for Ford JWA though the project ultimately did not enter production. In touring car competition, Westlake built special aluminium heads for Ford's Cologne RS 2600, used in the Ford Capri, helping the Westlake-badged Capri earn high finishes at Le Mans and European touring car titles, 1971-1972. He even tuned Ford Essex V6 engines for rally teams in the early 1970s. Throughout, Westlake's expertise in gas flow and combustion was sought by the top racing teams. Parallel to his auto work, Westlake made significant contributions to motorcycle racing. From 1948 to 1954, he worked with Norton's tuner Joe Craig on racing cylinder heads, improving the famous Manx Norton singles performance. In the 1960s, he designed a prototype 500cc twin-cylinder GP engine, later called the Raid Westlake, with four valves per cylinder and twin cams. In the 1970s, Westlake turned to Speedway. His company developed a new British Speedway 500cc engine to challenge the dominant Jawa. By 1976, Westlake-powered bikes were crowned. Peter Collins won the World Speedway Championship on a Westlake-engined machine, and in 1978 Westlake engines were chosen by the Exeter Falcons team. Westlake himself died at age 81 while attending the 1978 World Speedway Final. Westlake's expertise extended to aircraft engines beyond World War II. In the 1970s, he formed Westlake Aeromarine to develop new two- and four-stroke aero engines for the UK Ministry of Defence. His firm created experimental engines, type 060-116-200, etc., though none became widely produced. Throughout his career, he patented innovations in combustion chamber design, including a stratified charge chamber in 1953 that predated Honda's CVCC. Harry Westlake died suddenly on the 2nd of September 1978. He was watching the World Speedway Championship at Wembley when he collapsed and died of a heart attack. By that time he had spent over six decades advancing engine technology. Westlake left a legacy as one of Britain's greatest automotive engineers, credited with pioneering cylinder head designs across car, motorcycle and racing history. His work underpinned legendary engines, from Bentley racers and early Jaguars, through Van Wall and BRM Grand Prix engines, to Jaguars Le Mans winning C and D types and Ford's GT40. And his innovations influenced production engines, such as the Mini's power plant. He is remembered as the engineer who could extract extraordinary power and efficiency from internal combustion engines. This has been a production by Curious Jag. Please like and subscribe.